Hello, Tom again. Um, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to continue with the exercise by adding a new collection class. Um, this one, though, it's not going to be index based, but rather uh, based on a key value. Um, this is conceptually similar to something we did in our previous course, where we implemented an STL map in C++. OK, so it's the, the same kind of thing. Um, so if you open up the pointmap.cs file, this is the sort of starter file. Again, you can uh, add your own name as uh, one of the authors and update the since date. And uh, we'll go through this. Right now, all that's really in this file is a, is a new class called point map. Now, much the same way uh, that point list was inherit inheriting from collections base, there is a, uh, a, a base class that we can inherit from as well, which would be very uh, useful for us. Uh, in this case, the class is called, and it's defined in systems collection, it's called dictionary base. Okay, so uh, basically what a dictionary is, is rather than keeping track of things by an index, it keeps track of things by uh, a key value. Okay, and uh, each entry in the actual uh, dictionary has two parts, uh, a value and a key. All right, so by inheriting dictionary base, that gives us a, a lot of default functionality, much like what, what we did with the, um, uh, with the point list. Let's uh, uh, implement a few different uh, methods. We'll do add, remove. We won't do like remove at because there is no, no such thing. Uh, contains, I think those are three, three ones that might be uh, useful to us. So let's go through those one at a time. So for our add method, we need to have two parameters, not only the Cartesian point, but also um, a string representing the key. All right, and then much like we did with the um, uh, point list class, we're using the underlying, in this case, it's not a list. Uh, we use a, um, an iDictionary interface variable called dictionary, okay? So it's dictionary dot, and if I, if I actually do this with IntelliSense, I probably should have typed this in and let you see it. Um, there we go, dictionary, dot, and then you can see the various different uh, methods and, and fields and properties, et cetera, and so on of that uh, particular variable, okay? So yeah, so we just call uh, dictionaries add, and we pass through the, um, the string for the key and the uh, point, new point for the point. It's that simple. We do the same kind of thing for remove. I'm just using a little one-liner here. Okay, so again, it's remove. Uh, what am I removing? I'm removing a Cartesian point, which I'm calling old point, and I'm just letting dictionary.remove do the actual hard work for me. Do the same thing for contains. So once again, uh, my contains method is letting dictionary.contains do all the work for me. So that's good enough for now. I've got those three different methods. Um, I'd also like to implement an indexer. Now, the, the way that the indexer is going to be different for a dictionary is that it's still going to be a property um, called this square brackets, but what's going in the square brackets is not an integer, but rather a string. So let's check that out. Okay, so it returns a Cartesian, or it is a Cartesian point property. It's called this. It has square brackets, and where we had index here before, integer index, now we have string. I've called it the key. So when we're getting this square brackets, we want to return the dictionary and then square brackets, the key converted to a Cartesian point. OK, and again, just like with a um, uh, in the case of a uh, uh, my previous uh, point list there. Sorry, I was struggling with the name of it. Just like with the point list, I have to explicitly uh, return it as a Cartesian point. OK, and then setting it, it's dictionary. In square brackets, the key equals value. Pretty straightforward. Now, I wanted to find two other uh, properties. These are just going to be accessor properties, so they're only going to have a, a get block. Um, they're not going to have a set block. But what these two uh, properties will allow me to do is they're going to—it's going to expose um, the collection of keys and the collections of values separately. Sometimes that's really handy, just to be able to like give me what the keys are and, and just that list. So I'll show you how to uh, define those. We'll start off with, um, um, with the keys one. So it's going to be a public property. 
Okay, the property itself will use an I collections uh, interface variable um, as the as the type of property, and uh, we'll call it keys. All right, and I, as I said, it will only have a uh, get block. It won't have a set block. And what I want to return is um, much like my methods. I'm going to use uh, dictionary dot, and you notice dictionary actually has a keys property. Okay, so dictionary dot keys. So that will basically return the list, if you will, of just the actual keys, which will be very handy. We'll see when we we do this in main. And then we'll do almost exactly the same thing. In fact, I, I might as well just copy this and, and paste it here. And I'm just going to make two changes. So it's no longer keys. I want to call it values. And it's not dictionary.keys, but again, dictionary.values. Okay. So that will uh, basically let me ignore the keys and just treat it as a list of, of values in terms of at least getting the uh, individual Cartesian points in this collection. Okay, so now that we've got this uh, basic class coded, um, let's go back to main and actually implement this. So I'm just going to save that, go back to program. Um, so from part two iterators, we're done with that for now. Um, so you can comment out the console.read key uh, in that block. And then where it says part three keyed collections, uh, at the end of that block, you can uncomment that read key. Okay, so again, the previous stuff will still happen, uh, but we won't be able to see it because it'll go so quickly, and we'll just be able to focus in on this part here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a new points map object and add some entries to it. Okay, so that's I'm going to call it my map, and I'm going to make it equal to a new points map. Uh, my map dot add the key value I'm going to call home I'm going to use places as my key values just to play on the whole map thing and then for the coordinate I'll just create a new Cartesian point we'll say 9999 for now I'll, I'll add a couple more uh, so another uh, entry school is the key value and a Cartesian point of 55 five. work is the key value for the next entry and it's uh, three four is the Cartesian point um, so let's uh, show all the entries using a for each loop. And again, the dictionary base has a get enumerator method already, so I don't need to worry about coding one, uh, much the same way as I got one automatically for a point list as well. Okay, so we'll do a little for each loop. Uh, I'll output some headings first. Okay, so a couple of column headings, a little bit of a line. We'll do a for each loop. So for each. Okay, and then it's like, oh, wait a second, what are these things? Because they're not really Cartesian points. Um, they're not strings, they're both, right? Uh, what we're actually getting from the, uh, from the map is a dictionary entry. I, I might as well call it a dictionary, I suppose. So it, the type should be dictionary entry, okay? I'm just going to call it entry. So for each dictionary entry in um, my map. Okay. All right. So what do I want to do? I'll just do a, uh, a console uh, right line to to actually here, let me do it as I'm speaking here. So console. Oops. Oh, I can't type. Sorry, guys. Console dot right line. I should stick to just the copy and paste thing. Okay. Um, I'll do the key value followed by immediately by the actual um, Cartesian point value. Um, and so for the key value, how do I actually get that? So it's entry, okay, uh, because that's what I called it there. It's the dictionary entry, dot, and as soon as you say dot, you can see you've got uh, key and value properties. So I want the key property. Now I want to do a little bit of formatting on it. So entry.key gives me the actual key property, um, but I'm going to say to string, uh, which is a method, dot uh, pad left, <clears throat> sorry, pad right, I should say, 
uh, I want it left aligned in a field of uh, 10. Okay, so it's going to uh, do a little bit of formatting for me. But the, what I don't want to obscure this too much. The, the big part is the dictionary entry object name dot key. Okay, and then for the for the actual Cartesian point, I'm not going to do any formatting on it. It's just going to be entry dot, and this time it's the value property. Okay, so that's what I'm going to uh, to write, and then I'll finish up with a just a little bit of a decorative line there. Okay, so we're going to create the map, add some entries, and then essentially show those entries. So let's have a quick look at the output for that. Okay, so after adding the entry stored in my map, and there's a home, 99.99, work, 3.4, school, 5.6, everything's working out okay. All right, um, just to use one of the other, a uh, couple of the other methods, we're going to change one of the entries. Um, so let's say we want to change uh, the, the coordinate for home. So it'll be my map, right? And then we'll use the indexer to get to home. Okay, so my map at position home, oops, yeah, is going to be equal to a new point. So I'll say new uh, Cartesian point um, I could actually go through my map home and then and then actually set it to something else, but I'm going to do it this way. Um, and I want it to be zero zero. It was 99.99 to begin with. So once I've made that modification, okay, using the uh, using the index uh, indexer property there, uh, I want to go through another um, another round of showing the entries. This time I'm going to use I'm going to use a for loop again. Uh, I might as well just actually copy and paste this part of it. Okay, so again using uh, uh, instead of the dictionary entry though what I want to do is I want to uh, go through it by string. So I'm going to say string uh, each key in my map dot keys. Okay, you'll recall keys was one of the properties that we have access to uh, that we implemented in our class. So this is actually just going to go through my keys and ignore the points. Okay, this is an alternative way of doing this. So what am I going to write in this for each loop? Um, I'll do the same sort of thing I did before in terms of, you know, console.write line and we'll, we'll show the key value followed by the actual point, um, since the key already is a string, I don't need to say dot to string. I'll do the same pad right to make it nice and neat. Okay, so that's the string that it got out of keys. And then to actually get to the Cartesian point, I'm just going to say my map at position key. Okay, so I kind of like this, uh, this way of doing the for loop actually a little bit better than using a dictionary entry, but that's just me. So I wanted to show you both of those ways of doing it. And then I'll, I'll, you know, copy this line as well. Make it look pretty. And we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and save all that and go ahead and run it. So we can see uh, after adding, these were the uh, values. And then after, actually it shouldn't say adding, I'll have to change that. It should say after editing. Uh, here are the entries, and you can see home is actually changed. But that for each loop produced the same kind of uh, output. Um, this is through the keys collection, and this one is using dictionary entries. So they both work. Okay, I'll close this off. Um, I'll make that slight modification after editing. Run it again just to make sure it still works. And it looks good. All right, so that basically wraps up the uh, this video on uh, creating a basic collection class that is using um, dictionary base um, as its base class. Thank you very much.